So in this episode, we're up in Dunorwick Quarry in North Wales to find out if a one-inch sensor compact camera can be a legit option for outdoors photography in situations where the lightest weight is a major consideration. Do these small sensor cameras deliver? Well, let's head up into the quarry and find out. Welcome to a damp Snowdonia National Park. And uh, my little adventure today is uh, a bit of a walk up into uh, the Norwood Quarry. Uh, I've started right down at the bottom by uh, Lynn Perris. Uh, so I've got the, uh, the little track that climbs steeply up through through the wood and then onto a um, path that winds through the slate tips. And uh, <clears throat> that should put me at the uh, Anglesey Barracks sort of area. So I'll go and uh, have a, an explore uh, up in that area, looking up from the view that I had of the uh, upper part of the quarry, uh, there's some quite dramatic uh, mists floating around there, so hopefully I'll be able to take advantage of that and uh, get some atmospheric photos. So I will uh, make tracks up this very steep path and uh, I'll catch up with you in a bit. Right, made it a bit uh, further up the track, just where the uh, the zigzag starts up the slate tip, and uh, I'll just turn the view around. It is quite an interesting path that channels that's channeled through the slate tip. Very interesting. You can see you can see the zigzag from the from the road down by Lynn Paris, or looking across from the other side of the lake in any case. And uh, it just tops out just above the, uh, the tree line. So looking across the, uh, the lake there up to uh, Nant Paris and the far reaches of the quarry there. But you can see the cloud base at least it's not raining though. Right. I'd say this is uh, stage one of the climb completed. Uh, just at the uh, the point here where the one of the main inclines runs round comes down via Anglesey Barracks and then arrives at this point where it drops down again to uh, the road down by the Lambeau Slate Museum. So I'm going to be following that route round to the left. You can go up through the woods there. but I'm going to go round here. Now part of today's uh, photo outing is a bit of a gear test. So uh, many years ago I, uh, I used to have a Canon PowerShot G9 uh, sort of compact camera. It was uh, what they were calling a premium compact at the time. It had uh, nice build quality and it also shot uh, in RAW as well. Uh, it was 12 megapixels and uh, quite a small sensor uh, but I, I really enjoyed using it and got some uh, did get some uh, really good photos with it. Some of my favourite photos actually were were produced with that camera. Um, predominantly because of the uh, versatility and lightweight, uh, you could just stick it into uh, into a bag, 
and just forget about it and then use it when uh, when the time time came and I used to use it predominantly on uh, on hiking trips because of the uh, you know because of the weight and any uh, thoughts to sort of compromises just uh, just weren't there as you took the photos and uh, they they came out really well so um, I haven't had that camera for quite a long time and I've been thinking recently about uh, trying to uh, get something similar again just so uh, I'm not carrying two or three kilos of uh, camera equipment all day on a on a hike you don't really notice it at the start but you certainly do at the finish so uh, uh, I did consider getting a, a second hand Canon uh, G9 again um, but there's been one or two people posting videos on YouTube with that camera claiming that uh, it can shoot pictures that look like film and ever since then the uh, the second hand prices have rocketed so I didn't think it was worth paying uh, what the going rate was at the time so um, what I ended up getting is the uh, Sony ZV-1 um, uh, the natural uh, choice would probably be one of the RX100 uh, models uh, but I was uh, a bit tempted by the uh, the video capabilities of it as well so and also the price it's a lot cheaper than the RX100 um, 6 or 7 or whatever the uh, current model is so yeah I'm trialing that camera today and uh, just seeing uh, what sort of images it can produce so yeah so that's the plan today just uh, get some shots with the uh, Sony ZV-1 and I'm also shooting with the Fuji X-T5 as well so be able to put a uh, a mix of uh, images from both cameras up at the end for you to have a look at. Well, I'm just going to head through, round and through those trees a bit, um, see what uh, photo opportunities we've got around there and uh, then what I'll probably do is head back and carry on up the incline to the next, uh, to the next level and uh, have a bit of an explore up there. Just hitting the cloud base here and starting to look very moody, dramatic. And out of breath too, but uh, I think I'll just take a breather and get some uh, photos of that, the remains of that little cabin at the uh, little dip there with this uh, mist sweeping in and out. Well, the mood's definitely gone now. I can see blue sky above. So uh, the mists start to clear on this uh, side of the Norwig. Although across uh, the Snowdon Range and uh, around this uh, cloud base is still pretty low. So 
the forecast did say it was going to stay like that um, and perhaps lift in the afternoon so anyway but the uh, the quarry is no longer enveloped in mist and doesn't look like uh, Lord of the Rings anymore so uh, my photography session is done so let's uh, have a look at these photos so this set of photos were all captured on the Canon PowerShot G9. This one using the built-in ND filter on that camera to soften the water. And that's one of the uh, things that attracted me to the ZV-1. Although the ND filter there is principally for video, it's nice to have for stills and adds a bit more creative flexibility into the mix. So image quality wise, all of these photos are detailed enough to print happily to A3+, probably even A2. But the key thing with compact cameras is how they enable photography once you get past what appears to be major disadvantages. Some of these images were taken on big hill walks and I just wouldn't have taken a DSLR had that been the only option. Now while image quality matters, it's not as important as composition and light. And flexible lens choice does aid composition, which is what makes a zoom compact a little bit more flexible than the mobile phone alternative. So here's an example from the ZV-1 then, and it's comparable to the G9, I'd say, with a little bit more room for cropping in post, thanks to that extra resolution. Overall, though, in a situation where I didn't want to carry a heavier camera, I'm confident that this compact camera will do all I need it to do. So what might appear at first a major downgrade may well encourage more photography. Certainly my experience using the Canon G9 in the past supports that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's been a, a while since I uploaded anything and perhaps I'll get uh, back into the routine of uploading videos on a bit more of a, a frequent basis. But uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in and uh, hope to see you next time.